another reactor, by the way. So this could be like, is this that weird? He did something like this before, right? Was it like Viking Hellion? I feel like, he, I feel like we've seen something very weird from him before that was like this, where he did the fast reactor with the starport. Because there's very, very, very few double reactor builds that you would do off of a one-one-one against Zerg. Um, could be maybe it's just a lot of, of medevacs. Maybe it's just a lot of Hellions and then a one medevac open. It could be Hellion or like a Hellbat Marine push too. With most of those attacks, you start the armory with like your slowest units move out, and then you're generally going to be able to turn Hellbats Double at that medevac. Moment. Double medevac. Oh, I think it's so maybe uh, like a very fast 60 Marine opener, but then also having a couple of Hellions somewhere. He has done something similar like this for sure. No, it's just an... odd to do this without going for like stim or something, right? You're like, I'm gonna have really fast marine medevac, but but then go into mech. Like you open up with 16 marines, and then Ooh. he actually goes into mech. That's, that's this is big brain right mech. there. Kevin. I must say this little uh, link run by is very nice because it's also a massive scout here for Sue. He spots everything he needed to know. And that definitely could be this weird thing. Now the Overlord was able to get in and scout a bit. I, the thing that surprised me though, right? If you're looking at this as Zoo, it, it still doesn't really make a tremendous amount of sense. And you, I, I feel like if you see that it's just one barracks with this, you can't really write off the possibility of it still being a mech build. So that, that illusion he may be trying to paint may not be as clear uh, or as well done as he was hoping for originally. I, mu I must say the lost time uh, by a special, by having to turn around and take care of those links running into his natural, I think it really hurts. Because Sue was already up to 51 drones. I think that this attack would have been a solid 15 seconds quicker. And it really does make all the difference. Because then suddenly those links are not out yet. The extra links, uh, they're definitely not in position either to defend. So it really feels that special having to turn around there for those links. It feels like it completely messed up his build. And he is indeed adding additional factories. And we see Hellions on the way. But uh, that Widermine is not going to fire. I don't think this is working out in the way it was intended, Nate. No. Those, just those handful of links yep. early on. Sue basically did like a little gut check. He's like, oh, I'm just going to you know throw a small punch. He's like, oh, wow, there's nothing here because you've loaded everything into Metabax. And suddenly Special gets the world. He gets everything. Good scan. He's uh, Aspire tech. And we're going to have a couple of missile turrets start up. But the Zergling drop, this is something you don't see a tremendous <laughs> amount of against Terran. And getting already a few SCVs, this is one of those things you have to be very uh, careful about, too. If they're able to pick off the SCV building that turret, you want to make sure that finishes. Liberators against Mutas with no upgrades will do okay, um, especially in, like, lower counts. That splash damage isn't too great, but if you have a turret you can fall back onto, or a Cyclone. Cyclones actually trade pretty well versus Mutas in low numbers. Yep. They can just lock on, they can micro a little bit, right? Stay out of range. Obviously, Mutas need to get right on top of the Cyclone. Cyclone can stay at a distance. We'll see if these first Mutas are able to get some damage here. Yeah, this is really nice. That lock on does uh -oh. a good bit of damage. Kind of he's, he's, and now yeah, Liberator is going to chase it down as well. This yeah. is going to be really awkward. Don't forget, the Liberators can just go back to that missile turret. One Muta goes down, the second one should absolutely go down as well. Oh, this one's so low on HP. This is ace right here, man. That is that is about as much as you can hope for. You've, you've completely stunned the Mutalisk play, but it's three battlecruisers being made at once, and he has that plus one ship weapons finishing up soon. So just trying to buy time for the BC transition. But Corruptors are already coming out, Roddy. I must say the work on both sides is insane. 95 against 94 workers. I know Special, obviously a big fan of TY, known as a Terran player who likes to build a lot of SUVs and never really stops building them. But this feels like the armies are going to be quite small when the work accounts are this massive. If he can pocket like six or seven battle cruisers, and then the Broodlords show up and he's like, oh yeah, you don't ha you're not going BCs this game. I'm fine. I don't need to have a big Corruptor escort. Yeah. Then this could get ugly really fast. Those those battle cruisers could you model down the Broodlords and, and pave the way for the ground army to move out and yeah. get some serious work done because Sue's got all these workers, but it's not like he's completely consumed the map. Like, Special's been able to, to stay on par with that economy, as you were just saying. He's got so many workers of his own. Yeah, he actually has a worker lead at this point. Because these Hellions are going to get taken out. But once again, Sue is not really scouting. Sue hasn't been in the main base for quite some time. Now we do see an Overseer morphing. I'm not exactly sure where that is, but it would be very useful for Azurk to get a little sneak peek in the main base of Special. Because if he doesn't have any anti air at all, I mean, then those Blue Boys are going to be useless. Those Broodlords can't fight battle cruisers. No, they cannot. 
Very nice that he got the ship weapons early on. I would have hoped to see him get plus oh, that's two really ship. Good. Oh, that's but so good by special. Denying that overseer yeah. from getting into the main base. You do not want him to know you're building battle cruisers because I, I think the corruptor count is still almost nothing. Like, he hasn't been thinking about it. He's getting two right now, but... Yeah, but he's got no supply anyway. He's I think there's already out. six. Are there already six battle cruisers? Is he, is he yeah. going for a No, those are, those are four, five, and six as okay, far as okay. I know. Actually, a couple of roaches going down there was a good oh, thing yeah. okay, for well. Sue. He's going to yeet on to these Broodlords, and I feel like this is definitely a little bit gung-ho from him. We've got 10 Corruptors on the way, and those BCs, 18. they need... Oh, yeah, now up to 18. They need a retreat path as those Vials start to hit them. Now, you do want to make sure you get rid of all of the Broodlords with this army so that your your Cyclones, your Hellions... Because, theoretically, if he gets rid of all the Broodlords and he falls back to Cyclones, the Cyclones will keep the Corruptors from actually getting up onto him. But you need to be very careful with that control. Instead, he chooses to lock on all the cyclones to this hatchery so he'll be able to pick that off pretty easily but you really need to be delicate with those bcs he sent them straight home i think that's really important losing that many battle cruisers at this stage of the game but he'd just be super dead yeah, he's gonna build three more so we're basically gonna end up with an absolute insane amount of bcs you see the barracks being rebuilt now as well. I guess he ended up losing his scouting barracks in the middle of the map yep. somewhere. Man in the missile turret's going to get paid some overtime, Kev. He's, he's queuing up quite a bit of those. He's like, well, I just need the anchor point so that you can't just bull rush me with corruptors. How many corruptors do we have out right now? Because he was building 18 at a certain point. I mean, Sue's economy is massive, and I think that Sue kind of likes these kind of games a little bit more scrappy, because once again, I don't feel that he's necessarily the best Zerg when it comes to Infestors and Vipers, but I do think he really likes going like eye for an eye, toe for a toes, like you kill my base, I kill yours, and we just kind of keep going back and forth as long as he, he keeps the game simple. Yeah. I mean, it's just, look at the army of special right now. What a weird tap. It's nine BCs. All he needs to do is kill the... Okay, well, he's probably, he's got too many SCVs, I'll, I'll say that much. But if he kills the Broodlords and he has the turrets to fall back to, the Corruptors can't do too much. So now, without Infestors, without Vipers, like, Abduct will cancel Yamato, and you can't teleport while being abducted. And Fungal Growth, you can't teleport while you're doing it. And, of course, you know, Neural Parasite is very strong. But even if you have a million Corruptors, he's going to be able to teleport back behind the turrets. And, well, you can't build a million Corruptors. So the turrets will actually be able to push, push it away at some point when you build enough of them. I must say, I find it weird that Sue doesn't have that much gas, considering the fact that it feels like he's been so rich forever, and he's super rich in the minerals. Gas-wise, he's starving a little bit more, even though he hasn't really been building any of those uh, spell casters yet. Waves. So EMP is a huge target. He even gets the one Raven for the Dorito Cannon to make those Corruptors super susceptible to those. Think about it this way. He doesn't have any Carapace upgrades for the air, so those Corruptors will have zero armor, and actually might be a negative one if they're hit by a Dorito Cannon. Now we're going to get a couple of parasitic bombs on these BCs as well. So oh the DPS God. of the Zerg army does seem quite all right. But the Yamatas are just melting these Corruptors like it's nothing. And the Medivac brings the Ghosts over to get even more snipes onto this army. He can't engage that while he's Dorito dusted as those Liberators are going to come back over. Oh, those Corruptors clump up. You have to be so careful. I mean, that massive bank that Sue had once upon a time. Well, that's pretty much gone, guys, with only 67 drones as well. It's gonna take a while before he's able to build that up again. There is a base on the right top side, so maybe Sue can start saturating that one. We're back to 27 Corruptors. Now, that is still enough Corruptors that I would say that Sue can absolutely crush a fight with. Yeah, it, at this point, though, with those Liberator numbers, because he never got any Air Carapace, it is such a huge deal because he is going to, the, the Corruptors are gonna have negative one armor if they get hit by that Raven anti-armor missile. And then that splash damage becomes ridiculous. Those two BCs got to get the hell out of there. This Orbital Command is in a lot of trouble and will most likely go down. A couple of random Brute Lords. I mean, Sue is pretty much broke, but he does still have an army. He's got one more real shot. And just, not just winning a fight, but he needs to crush the fight. He needs to absolutely dominate it. And it looks like, uh, based on what we have on the field at the moment, whatever that fight will have won't include more Vipers. I think Parasitic Bomb is important 40. for dealing with those those liberators 
Isn't it crazy to watch Sue play Zerg? He's like, does he not watch any of the other Zergs? Uh, he's like, yeah. Special dies instantly, too. Yeah, 60 passes is definitely some potential. All of these Liberators are going to move forward as well. If the Lips can get on top of the Infestors, that'd be massive. Here we go. This is very well, or could very well be the game deciding fight. Yeah, we have the Infestors on the right side. Battle Cruiser's going for the Yamatos. Liberators are going to unseize, and I think he's just going to try and take this, uh, but getting hit from all angles definitely not going to help. The Liberators not able to get the damage done that they're looking for just yet. We still have six battle cruisers alive. That 40 corruptor count has been reduced to 14. Everything is going to die. He's going to teleport the BCs out. He saves five of them. And when we talk about low eco games, Kevin, I'm not really seeing many mineral patches available for either player, but there is a base down on the left and the northeast. <laughs> He's ghost. He's ghost are getting a couple of snipes in there in the end, picking up a few more corruptors. That's quite big. No, like it still feels that Sue maybe has some fresher bases, right? I, like think, yeah, I think the biggest problem is Special needs another base. He needed yep. another base a while ago. Sue still has a little bit of money in the bank, so he can make a few more roaches to be safe against these Hellbats. The armies are quite close to each other in the right top side of the map, so keep a close eye on the minimap. We are looking at this Hellbat fight. It seems like Special got a cancel on that base of Sue. These four cross are going to go down as well. I like that he's building, bringing SCVs with the fight. I mean, a lot of these BCs, they're obviously super tanky, so they'll take damage, but if you can repair them during the fight, that can really have a big impact, yes. especially if these battles go on for a long time. Yeah, 100%. Those ghosts in the medevac are incredibly important. If you could get an EMP onto the investors, that'd be so nice. And the reason that medevac is also really amazing is, like, all those Ravagers come over, they're like, oh, let's kill the ghosts. No, you can't. Nice try. Oh, Viper gets picked off immediately as Burrowing well. Burrowing drones in front of Ravens, 2019. Well, Sue losing 23 drones, that can't possibly make him happy. And of course, two bases technically, because he's trying to get the base underneath this one as well. So at this point... Oh, that was fantastic. I still am a little perplexed at the commitment to the air. I feel like in these in these situations, like Zerg has like really good tools for dealing with stuff like BCs once you start to get the investors in. And, like if he had tried to go into like more Thors or something, I'm not entirely sure that there'd be a whole lot for Sue to deal with on the ground army level with like Liberator support, but... This is some scary stuff. The Broodlord count is not crazy. Like, there's a, there's a world where these Vikings can still do some stuff while the BCs try to move out and harass in some way, but the Hellions are also nice. totally fine for that. That's one of the things that makes that Transformation Service upgrade so nice. Because this game has become such an air fest, like, what is actually on the ground that can fight? The five Roaches and four Ravagers? and 14 links. Well, Hellbats one-shot the links now that they have plus three, so you just kind of throw Hellions at them and try and buy all of that time, move some of these faster units out. Hell, those Vikings could probably land and kill a lot of this too, while the, if the investors aren't here. Are the Corruptors just going to uh, try and pick off the infrastructure? This actually feels a bit weird. Now, a couple of these missile turrets are going to go down. A special brought all of his units up to the top side. I'm not exactly sure why he did that. Was there a reason to go here? I, I, kind the, of the army movement from special this game has been a little bit disconcerting for me. Um, those corruptors. That is a every big time those, army, though. That is yeah. a big Terran army. Every time those corruptors clump up, though, I'm like, mm, yep. a well placed Dorito cannon and two shots from those liberators are going to kill everything. We've got eight lifts, but we also have eight infestors. There's still one Viper in the mix as well, but I think he wants to save the energy for Parasitic Bomb, right? I think Parasitic Bomb. On the Vikings would be Yep, would Viking be or Ellipse. I think on the Lips is quite nice as well. Yeah. The full Parasitic Bomb kind of takes him down to one shot from the corruptors, but the liberators are also going to clump really hard. It doesn't do a whole lot versus the BCs, but Ooh. every Yamato that he can get in this situation yep. is really nice, though, pre-fight. I'm not sure that the investment was made into Neural Parasite. I didn't see that at any point, so I believe the, the focus will just be on Fungal to hold units in place and the um, Infested Terran support, but Hellbats get into That's this so space amazing. again. So many more drones going to get picked off. Gets another one. Yep. 46 Corruptors, though. I don't really understand why Sue didn't, didn't just keep his roaches there, because there isn't really anything to gain here for his roaches on the right top side of the yeah. map. I mean, yes, there are four ghosts, but those ghosts are always chilling inside of the medevac anyway, so the roaches are never going to get close. This That's is awkward. That's the abduct you want. The abduct you want is on the medevac. <laughs> get rid of the ghosts, and then suddenly this becomes a whole lot trickier. Like, if he if he clumps those corruptors too much, eats a bad parasitic bomb, gets emp like, special wins, like, hardcore. But if he, if he whiffs those, if he misses those, the Corruptors get a couple good shots off those fungals you were talking about or Neural Parasites, Ooh, then the, the special will lose his whole army instantly too, so. Imagine if they were able to get there a little bit quicker, or if he would have sent a couple of Hellions to the left side immediately, then all the remaining drones would have been Ooh. pretty much clumped up. These armies are getting, uh -oh. once again, awfully close towards each other. Yeah, that's, that's what you got to be careful about at that point. 
And Hellbats just doing what they can, buying time, being annoying. Now we had a legendary games once upon a time during the WCS Global Finals between Neeb and Rogue, where I think Neeb ended up with 199, or was it 200 yeah, no, on his supply? Yeah, he had 199, he had one broke. Uh, we're there he goes. He's trying to actually EMP these Infestors. All right, he gets a few of them. A couple of fungals oh, do no. land. Infested Terrans are coming out. The Battle Cruisers are going to show up. To, to bring in the rear. Spore crawlers are getting damage done. We do have the Dorito Cannon launched onto all of these units. Vikings and Battle Cruisers doing everything they possibly can. We still got seven BCs, but 25 Corruptors remain on the map, trying to micro them back individually, but adding in the Corrosive Bile as well. And those Spores, but the Viking support still doing everything it can. The, Vi the Corruptor count is down to just nine. Special is taking the supply lead. He's pushing him back, and this could be everything that he's needed. Sue has nothing else, nothing in production, no Whoa. more income. The battle cruiser's still standing while the Vikings defending them. If he can keep just a few of these BCs alive, there will be nothing to stop them. I think there's only like four corruptors left. That's it. He's building nothing. He's pretty much broke. <laughs> I mean, there's still four in Festus, and let, let's never underestimate that. But special with this base, mining in the left bottom side of the map, that fight was nuts. I felt like it started off in a disastrous way because he got fungal. There was a parasitic bomb, but eventually all of these Terran units started to spread out a little bit, and he microed the, uh, the battle cruisers back during that battle as well. Oh my I think God. that made a pretty big difference. Sue is going to mine a little bit again. But this army, as soon as there is some HP back on these BCs, I mean, there should be no stopping this army. No. But there's probably not going to be enough energy on these infestors for Sue to save the day here. He's going to try to catch up in supply, but now he's making links. And I think everybody knows once you start making Zerglings against Vikings and battle cruisers, it's often <laughs> a very clear <laughs> sign that you're in trouble. It's not, a, it's not the strategy I'd recommend, Kevin. No, no, no. BCs are going to roast those drones. There's nothing they can deal with this. There's a handful of infestors, but they just burned all their energy, too. Like, what he, what's he going to do? Drop drop 10 infested Terrans, the BCs will kill before they even more. Man, that was such a fight. He's building two more battle cruisers now, by the way. Was that like 50 Corruptors, by the way? In the 48. Sudden? I think it was 48, 48 Corruptors. He killed, he killed damn near all of them. But only plus one armor. It's probably yeah. also... Well, like he finished plus one Carapace as that fight ended, Kim. That was, that's, I'm not going to lie, that's a huge thing. That is so big. Those Corruptors were at negative one armor. The amount of damage they were taking from Battle Cruisers and Liberators, two units that don't really do a lot of damage is huge. But remember that Vikings also attacked twice. Like, those Vikings were the MVPs yeah. in that battle because he's like, well, Vikings, I'm not worried about those. But, oh, wait, my Corruptors are literally taking plus one bonus damage per hit. And all of these units are attacking, like, tw ten times a second. And, of course, it's still forget that special his upgrades have been at 3-3 for the longest time. Yeah. It's kind of the way you want to have it. Yeah. He never it, got plus three air attack either. Yeah, it's quite bizarre, right? That Sue had this much time and then ended up with an army that consisted of 48 corruptors, but then the upgrades were only 2-1. It, it's funny because we don't often talk about upgrades like being that meaningful for these higher tier units, but they are. For like yeah. if Marines would be 3-3 against 2-1, we'd make the biggest fuzz in the world. It's like, oh, that's impossible to win for the 2-1 player. But obviously for air, the, the same goes to some degree. It's a bit different when the investors can have a massive impact as well, or of course an anti-army missile and stuff like that. But these upgrades are still very important and being maxed out on an army that only has 2-1 upgraded yeah. air units is kind of well, odd. The battle cruiser at plus three attack has eight damage versus air. A corruptor by default has two armor, right? So you normally it's supposed to only do like maximum damage would be like six per hit. Mm -hmm. But with the anti armor missile, he's doing nine damage. He's doing more damage than the battle cruiser can actually even do because of that. Because he just didn't have any upgrades, and that that makes a huge difference when you've got so many of these units fighting, and that's what allows you to kill 48 corruptors. He's just going to move this field of spores forward. But at some point, I think Sue is just going to realize he, there's nothing he can do against this. He I'm doesn't have the economy to build anything that can stop this. You know what was so bizarre about that fight as well? That it was right above the dance floor in the middle of the map. So yeah. it was hard to see the creep. And then there were a couple of spore crawlers hidden as well. And I was like, I wonder if Special even saw these spores. Because you don't often see spores participate in a battle for that long. But those spores pushed out insane damage. But it still didn't make the difference. Two spores are apparently not enough. If that was five or six, that would have been a completely different fight, that's for sure. Yeah. And the Observer just now pointed out again that, that plus one carapace. So even if they fought now, like the BCs and Vikings are still in a great spot. Oh. And he's ready to end it. He's going to scan Yamato the Infestors, and that's it. Neural Parasite, by the way, it doesn't cancel Yamato. Stick a fork in this one, Roddy. Because it's all that's over. It. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, I was, I was, I was going to try to time that because this game's done with the GG. There we go. Because this game's done. Special. Ties it up one to one.